<laughs> hey, what's up, friends? Welcome back to Brick by Brick. I'm your host, Adam Ward. And if you're wondering while I'm giggling, while staring into this odd looking Lego contraption, well, I've got an answer for you. We made a Lego kaleidoscope. Yeah, a working Lego kaleidoscope that actually looks awesome. I don't know if we could do it. Steve was like, let's make a Lego kaleidoscope. And I was like, that's not even a thing. Now it's a thing, my friends. A kaleidoscope is an amazing optical illusion. It's not even an illusion, because it's really happening. When you have a clear cylinder with a bunch of translucent pieces that refract and reflect light, and it puts on a crazy, wonderful show for your eye. This thing is bananas. I can't wait for you to see it. But before you can see it, you gotta learn how to make your own. Friends, it's kaleidoscope time. The scope is basically a collection of one by four pieces connected by some hinges. So we're gonna start at the end, the part closest to the tumbler. So first things first, we grab three one by fours. Then we grab our hinges and we attach our one by fours by connecting the hinges evenly on each side. That forms our triangle. This is gonna be the overall shape of our scope. The equilateral triangle helps light bounce off the sides and just makes amazing designs. Once we've got our hinges in place, we're gonna put another row of plates right on top. We have a really strong foundation for our scope. We don't want it falling apart in our hands. That's no fun. On top of these, we're gonna put one single layer of bricks. Brick, brick, brick. Then we've got some really cool two by two snot plates. So these plates are gonna go on and the external studs are gonna be on the outside because we wanna keep the inside of our kaleidoscope nice and smooth. All right, now that we've got those pieces in place, we are gonna do four more rows of bricks. On this side, one, two, three, four. Now, once we've got those, it's time to solidify our design. We need to make it a little bit stronger, so we put in another row of these hinges. Still following the same angle that we started, now on top of these, we're gonna do five rows of bricks. Great, now we just need another row of hinges to lock in those pieces. Boom. Bada. Boom. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the edges a little bit more rounded. So when we're holding up to our eye, we don't poke ourselves in the edge of our eye with the corner or anything like that. So we've got some really cool rounded pieces. So on top of the hinges, we're gonna go with a one by four, just a plate. And then on top of those plates, we do a one by two plate. So we can then attach our little telephone piece. This is the one by four curved tile, which creates a really lovely eye piece. So you can go right up to your eye without any concern about poking yourself. And even though there's no pieces on this side, we're already getting some cool effects. Now on this end, where we added the one, two, three, four, five, six knot pieces, if you don't have six, really, you only need two. I like to put them on each side just to be even with the design, and that also helps us attach our arm to any side we want. But since it's equilateral triangle, all the sides are basically the same. So my friends, it is time to build the arm. This is where the scope gets attached to the tumbler and the magic meets our eye. The arm has got a lot of pieces because it's got to hold the tumbler steady and make sure that it doesn't fall off while you're looking through the scope. So we use a lot of plates stacked in specific ways so that your arm is super strong. This arm works out. So we're gonna kick off the arm with these six plates. They're all too wide and we've got an eight, a 12, two more eights and two sixes. And we basically just make a pile of these six bricks. The sixes go right on top of each other. The eights go right on top of each other and then go right on top of the sixes like that. The 12 goes on top of that whole creation. And then our final eight goes on top right in the middle. So we've got two bricks here and two bricks there. Final product looks like that. So that does it for the part of the arm that attaches to the scope. Now for the part of the arm that attaches to the tumbler itself. We've got another collection of plates that are too wide. We've got two two by sixes, three two by eights, and one big boy, a two by 12. We also have four of these modified plates with the cool slope on the edge. We'll get to that later. 
So we're gonna start with our biggest piece first, our two by 12. We're gonna put our six on top, so it's hanging off by one set of studs, and our eight on the other side. So we've got one opening there and one opening there. Then we're gonna take another six and eight and put them right on top. We're gonna switch the sides so that our seams don't line up. So this arm is nice and strong. And then on top of this whole number, we are going to put our two by eight right in the middle. So we have an opening of three here and an opening of three there. Now for our little cool modified pieces, we're gonna put these on the very end. Two on that side, and two on this side. Finished product looks like that. Now we're gonna bridge the gap between the two arms. We've got the arm that's over the tumbler and the part that's over the scope. So what we need to connect them is two two by eights. So the opening that we left over here connects to the opening that we left here. And no surprise what's coming next, the opening we left there connects to that opening as well. Now, because we want this to be really strong, we want to put more pieces on top, but we don't want it to be too bulky. So instead of using more plates or even bricks, what we're gonna use is some tiles. So we've got a collection of tiles that will snap on. And you can use any size you want. You just wanna make sure that you're using nice big tiles that connect all the pieces. You don't wanna seam there or there. They're gonna live just like that. Our arm is almost complete. All we need to do is add the braces. So the right brace has three one by four bricks, which we just stack one on top of the other. And then we're gonna add these cool snot plates. We're gonna add them just like this. And under those, we are going to do two one by four plates. Go right up in there. And then we use two more one by two plates. And below the one by two plate, one final of our little snot one by twos. Now the other brace that comes down is built similarly, but uses different snot pieces. We have three one by four bricks, put those together, and then we connect those to our snot bricks. And these are one by two snot bricks, and it's very important that we connect them like this, because these go on the bottom of our turntable. And then we wanna add this one by four to make it even stronger. So what we do is we use these two by two tiles, put them on top and lock them together. So we are done with the arm for now. We're gonna put these pieces aside and it is tumbler time. So the base of it is these four quarter circle four by fours. So basically just put those together to get our pretty circle. And then in the center, we're gonna put a smaller circle, a four by four circle all the way around. Now, since the tumbler is big, if we didn't put something in the middle to space out the translucent pieces, if we filled it up, they would block out all of the light and we wouldn't have a cool kaleidoscopic effect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a transparent, meaning see-through, column in the center. So what we do is we have these super cool one by two by fives, cause they're five tall. And we're gonna put these all the way around. And what these do is they're gonna help knock our pieces around as we tumble, and they're gonna allow more light to pass through the pieces. We can lock those together with not one, but two of these rounded four by fours. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna begin to surround the perimeter of our tumbler with these awesome, transparent, curved one by four by fives. So we're gonna put on one, we're gonna put on two, we're gonna put on three, but we're gonna pump our brakes and pause before we get to four because we wanna leave an opening so we can pour all of our fun pieces inside. So we're just gonna put this fourth one aside. Don't worry, you're still gonna invite to the party. Just gotta take it for a second. Now you can see why we added two of these plates on top because now our interior column is the same height as our outer wall. So what we're gonna do next is take these quarter circles and put them right on top. And just like we held off on a quarter of the wall, we're gonna hold off on a quarter of the ceiling. Just let it hang out there for one second. Now what we're gonna do is flip our entire build over and reinforce the base and add the turntable so the whole tumbler can move. So we're gonna grab a four by four. This one doesn't have to be a circle. And then four one by four plates. These go all the way around gonna help our tumbler stay together even when we're spinning it super fast. And then in the dead center of our four x four, we're going to attach a two by two turntable. 
Love these little pieces. Just like that. And now if we flip it back over, we can see how our piece is going to spin. Now for the fun. Now to add some translucent pieces inside. So there are all sorts of different shapes and sizes of translucent pieces. If you use small ones, they'll have less of a chance of getting caught on something. So I've got a bunch of translucent one by one plates. You can also use tiles. I just recommend something smaller than a brick. That seems to be a good amount. And then we'll take our final piece. See, I told you you were coming to the party. And then our ceiling piece comes in, snaps in just like that. So I've made a few of these, so I have an idea of how many to put in, but this is a great time to kind of put it on its side, give it a little spin. You never want the top to be totally bare and you never want the top to be totally packed. So now we're gonna reinforce the ceiling. So we're gonna grab another four by four plate. And very gently, we don't wanna to squeeze too hard. And then around that, same thing as we did it on the floor, one by four plates all the way around. That's gonna keep our tumbler nice and secure. And right on top of that, we do another two by two turntable. Now you can hold the two turntables in your fingers. You get that awesome spinning effect. So all we have to do now is add a little bit of height to the top and to the bottom so this fits perfectly into our arm. And to do that, we use some rounded four by fours. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add two to the bottom and three to the top. But before we add the ones to the top, we're gonna put some tiles around our turntable so the motion is really nice and smooth. So four one by two tiles all the way around, and then we go, stay still turntable. <laughs> one, two, three. And now for the bottom, we're gonna add two. So we can stack them right on top of each other. And we also wanna put tiles here but we can't put it on the bottom, so we have to put it on these. So right on the outsides, we leave the middle open to accommodate our two by two turntable. We put four two by two tiles. Pick up our tumbler, line it up just like that. Now we can hold it in our hands, give it a little test spin. Still in really good shape. Now we're gonna attach this to our arm. So here come the arm pieces, the one for the bottom and the one for the top, and then the rest of our arm. So the bottom of these bricks is going to line up exactly with the center of the four by four rounded plates we put on the top. And if we flip our tumbler over and look at the bottom, these pieces line up exactly with the bottom of these four by four rounded plates. And if we move the arms to the top, they connect right into the rest of our arm. Give it a squeeze all around. Nice and sturdy, good spin action. We bring our scope back in and our scope attaches right in the middle to the back of our arm. And now for the moment of truth. Whoa. It gets me every time. Our kaleidoscope is complete. And while I was prototyping, I was like, Lego bricks, they're pretty reflective. But what would it be like if we actually put mirrors inside? So I did make one that just has some crafting mirrors attached. They really add quite a lot. So you definitely don't need to put them in. But if you live near a craft store, if you feel like getting crafty online, you can attach some craft mirrors with some double-sided tape and even enhance the effect. So whether you use craft mirrors or keep it a hundo, percent Lego. I'd love to see what design you come up with and what colors and combinations and patterns you can create with your own Lego kaleidoscope. It's been so much fun building with you. Thank you for watching. To see more episodes of Brick by Brick, click on the box on the left and to subscribe to Soul Pancake, click on the box on the right. And if you want a daily dose of additional Lego goodness, follow me on Instagram at peaceandbricks. Friends, I will see you next time.